Pete Wishart. Oh, thank you ever so much, Mr Deputy Speaker. I wasn't expecting that, but I'm delighted to be taken so early in this debate. I want to see if we can maybe do something different in this particular debate today, because these debates are always characterised by real polarisation. On one side, of course, we've got people who are passionate the unionists who want to put the case. And of course, we here want to put the case for the independent Scotland. So I'm going to see if there's any place where we can agree, where we can maybe even set a set of principles where we can engage in this debate based on something that's approaching a consensus around the language. Now, I might not be successful, Mr Deputy Speaker, but I'm going to give it my best shot and just see how far we get with this. So I'm going to propose a few assertions just to see if the House will agree to them. And the first one I'm going to say is that Scotland would be a, a successful independent country. Yeah. Here, here. Surely yeah, yeah. all of us could agree to that thing. Scotland would be a successful independent country. I'm not so sure about the Labour front base because I put that to the honourable gentleman and he wasn't so sure. But even the most <coughs> rabid, passionate Tory unionists surely wouldn't try to assert that the Scottish people, with all their history of invention, with all our history of creation, of all our in history of innovation and imagination, would somehow uniquely fail amongst all the peoples in the world who have secured independence, they would uniquely fail in making a success of our independence. So can we all agree Scotland would be a successful independent yeah. country? Yeah. 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 Of course I, I, I agree with you, honourable gentleman. I'm, I'm delighted he's given away so early. This debate isn't <coughs> about that. This debate is about the broken proposition that you are putting as a prospectus for that independent Scotland. And that's what we have demonstrated has holes in it. It's up to you to make that proposition, not us. And I will respond to that challenge. In fact, the Honourable Gentleman, because I think I heard them say that Scotland would be a successful independent country. I think that's what he was saying. So what, what I've got... What I've, well, yeah, OK, right, I want to hear the Honourable Gentleman say that too. If, if you're looking for just that quote and to edit that out for video clip purposes, then I'm happy to oblige. But... <laughs> Just as, just, as Scot just as an independent Scotland or a separate Scotland could p possibly succeed, would he also argue, argue that an independent England or an independent Wales or an independent Northern Ireland would, would succeed as well? But not nearly as much as a United Kingdom. Yes, this, is, this is progress, Mr Deputy Speaker, and, and I now feel I'm on the right sort of track with this because I think what we're getting across the House is the agreement to the assertion that Scotland would be a successful independent country. I have no doubts whatsoever that England, without Scotland's contribution to, to, through its resources, would be equally successful as an independent nation. I, I believe that somehow they would just about muddle through without our support and intervention. And, yeah, I hope I'm going to get a clean sweep here now with the Liberals to agree to this. And I'm counting on the other gentlemen to do that. I hate to disappoint you, honourable gentlemen. But if you took a straw poll amongst the pregnant mothers in Caithness who now have to travel over 100 miles to give birth in Inverness, and this has happened on the SNP's watch, he would get a pretty it's dusty answer. <coughs> you see, I was, I was going so well, Mr Deputy Speaker. I had the Conservatives agree to that. I think I had the Labour Party agree to it. But the Liberals just could not bring themselves to agree with the proposition that an independent Scotland would be a successful independent nation. It's, it's unfortunate. I, I think we've had the Liberals, if that's OK with Donald Lady. I think we're, we're, we'll do all right. I'll come back to her, because I've got other assertions, I've got other assertions to make. Now I think we've all agreed that, other than the Liberal Democrats. Let's try another one. With all, with all our resources, with all our resources, and Mr Deputy Speaker, I'm referring when I speak about all our resources, uh, let's include the good proportion of nearly all of Europe's oil and gas reserves, yeah, yeah. the greatest potential for renewable energy that exists in Europe, vast fisheries, a water supply that is the envy in the world that Scotland has what it takes to be an independent country. Could we all agree to that? Here, here. Right, yes, I'll, let's see if she'll agree. To, Scotland has what it takes to be an independent country. Thank you very much. I thank the Honourable Member for giving way, but I just perhaps point out that he misinterprets what all of us think 
None of us have ever said that Scotland couldn't be independent, Whoa. but that the people of Scotland, when given the choice, have voted no because they feel their future is better within the United Kingdom. Again, I, I think that's a bit. Can I just say that's just a little bit more encouraging? Because I, I think we're moving towards the assertion that Scotland would be a successful and that Scotland has more than what it takes to be in a. Perhaps we could even suggest, I'll try this one, I'll just throw this one just a little bit, a wee bit further on this theme. Perhaps we could even suggest that Scotland is perhaps the best resourced country that has ever considered becoming an independent country. I think, I think that's pretty incontrovertible. No country is better endowed to be an independent nation then when we look around at Scotland, whether it's oil and gas reserves, whether it's fisheries, whether it's a potential renewable energy, no Scotland, no country other than Scotland is better prepared to be... Can we agree on that? Yes. I'm looking for the Honourable General to agree on that. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more with the Honourable Lady who said nobody would disagree with his assertion other than the, the fact that... We, we, the, the people of Scotland have repeatedly, or, or, or have when it counted, voted to stay in the United Kingdom. Being in the United Kingdom is better. But on the subject of fisheries, one of, one of, look, look, let, me, let us all agree, Scotland's great. Scotland's fantastic. Scotland within the United Kingdom is even better. Even but, better, yes. But w will, he, will he confirm that an independent Scotland under the SNP's proposals, when he talks about fisheries, would be to rejoin the EU and therefore rejoin the common fisheries policy? I'm so, I'm so grateful to the Honourable Gentleman for raising the EU because what I want to say now, and, I, and I'm sort of suspecting that I'm not going to get the same range of agreement around the House when it comes to this particular session. But what I want to do, let's see if we can agree to this one. That the only way for Scotland to be a member of the European Union is to become an independent nation. Yeah. Can we all agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. I've seen a couple of no's, mainly again from the Liberal Democrats, who I have to say, Mr Deputy Speaker, I'm very, very disappointed when it comes to this. I thought I would have had a more encouraging response from our Liberal Dem Yes, I'll give way to the Honourable Gentleman. I'm very grateful to uh, the Honourable Gentleman given way. I don't know if at some point in his speech he's going to touch upon the motion that we're actually yes. debating, because uh, his series uh, of rather interesting questions, which I'd be very happy to discuss with him in the bar at Strangers, aren't actually uh, relevant to the debate we're having. But in, the, the, in his motion, he describes Britain as a failing, or the, his party describes Britain as a failing state. He now asks us all, without defining what failing is or what success is, to decide, define whether Scotland will be successful. If Britain is failing and Scotland's going to be successful, why is it that his proposition is that they should keep the pound, uh, which he claims is failing? Uh, 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 just a couple of gentle things to the Honourable Gentleman, who I actually respect for all his noise and bluster in the chamber. <laughs> Look! Scottish independence. This is what the debate is about, and I don't know if that sort of missed the Honourable Gentleman. I'll come into his, his very points because I want to come to them because it's important, but I'm really keen to see. Like, the, what, this is not what I want to do. I, I thought I was going to stand up here today and I was going to find agreement across the House. And I have to say, where I thought I was making a bit of progress with that, it's sort of disappearing a little bit. But I'll try once again, Mr Deputy Speaker, to see if I can do it. I mean, all, I want, all I want is for everybody to agree that the only way, the only way that Scotland can be a member of the European Union is through being independent. Now, we know that because they're all parties of Brexit now. They, they all want to make Brexit work now. I don't know how you do that. I don't even know if it's possible to make Brexit work. I think it's almost designed not to work, because it's, it's not any sort of economic strategy. It is an ideological mission. And I'm not entirely sure that you could make an ideological mission like Brexit works, but they want to make it work. So we're left with a situation that the only way, and I don't see how this is uncontroversial, the only way that we could make Scotland a member of the European Union is, is, a, is, is an independent nation. And we know the Scottish people want that. We know that because that's what they voted for. We're going on about democracy here. The Scottish people voted with an overwhelming majority to remain in the European Union. And every single subsequent poll since then has shown that the Scottish people want to rejoin the European Union. So let's all agree. Let's all, no, I've given it to the Honourable Lady before. Let's all agree that the only way to do this is in the European Union. A member of the European Union. I'll try another one. I'll try another one. We'll just see. And this one's probably 
This one's probably not going to get there with my colleagues, but I'll see what we can do. The only, the only way for Scotland to get the government that, that always votes for is as an independent nation. Can we, can we agree with that? The only way we'll always get the government we vote for is an independent. Now, occasionally, in the past, in, in my time as an MP, the, gov the government. Well, he says this makes sense. Well, when I was elected in 2001, Scotland voted for Labour. It got the government that it wants. But since 2010, Scotland has never had the government that has voted for. So what I'm saying, and it's, again, it's uncontroversial. Scott, the only way for Scotland to get the government that it always votes for is as an independent na nation. Yeah, yeah. Now, I thought we might have a little bit of difficulty with that one, but it's not too no, bad. So I'm a bit more encouraged. So I'll, I'll see how much more we could get out of this thing. Can we all maybe <coughs> agree that when we look round the rest of Europe and my honourable friend always refers to Ireland, and he's, he's right to do so because it's a great example. But when we look around the rest of Europe, when we look at nations such as I don't know, Ireland, Iceland, Finland, Norway, Denmark, nations which are roughly the same size as Scotland, five million to eight million people, and they're all much more successful than Scotland. They're all powering ahead. They're, they've got economic growth. They've got GDP, which is something we can only envy. Can we all agree? that there's something about the constitutional arrangements of Scotland that doesn't let us prosper the way that our neighbours do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No? No? He says no? <coughs> yes, I'll give away. Sorry. Yeah, makes an absolutely fantastic point. He's just listed some nations there that are in the top ten of the UN Human Development Index. Yet here we are uh, as Scots MPs in the UK. The UK is in number <coughs> 18, and we're told that we're a poor part of number 18. Those who've left, such as Ireland, are ten places higher. Iceland, Norway, two and three. Of the countries he's mentioned. He makes the case brilliantly. For the Honourable Gentleman, who takes these issues very seriously, and I know that, but I'm a bit encouraged with all that. Here's one that they'll definitely agree to, and I'm pretty certain of this when it comes to this. Because I think we have to be honest about certain things. I think we have to acknowledge that there will obviously be difficulties too. I mean, I think independence will be positive for Scotland. I'm being in charge of road affairs, I think we could be an incredible nation, just like our, our near neighbours. But let's, let's see if they'll agree with us so much. I'm almost certain that we. That that they would. That at the starting point of Scottish independence, there will be issues because of the deficit that we have as part of the United Kingdom. Yep. Yep. You can all agree with that. I mean, like, there's no, no objection from the Conservative benches with that one. So, but could we also then agree that the way to resolve this deficit, as it's so called and has been demonstrated by colleagues, is to remove the conditions that create it? <coughs> Should we agree to that? So, what we actually want to yes. do then is to have the full range of economic powers which will allow us to properly address this and that we remove ourselves from the very institutions that give us this deficit to be part of the United Kingdom. Can we agree to that? Yeah, yeah. I'm seeing silence, but like, I don't think they're agreeing to it. I think they're just uh, humouring me now, Madam Deputy yeah, Speaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, last time to Donald Trump. <laughs> Not. I, 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 I. I'm grateful for the Honourable Gentleman for giving way to seek clarification on what he's actually asking. Is he actually asking that to remove the deficit that Scotland currently has compared to the rest of the United Kingdom, by, by removing Scotland from the United Kingdom, that deficit no longer exists? Is that what he's, he's asking? What I'm doing is maybe putting the other way around for the Honourable Gentleman. It might be easier for him to comprehend and understand. We have this notional deficit as part of the United Kingdom. It's part of, and I think we all agreed that all these other nations are powering ahead of us, but we're not. We, we've, we've got, according to the Honourable Gentleman, a deficit, which apparently means we can't be independent, but we've got that deficit because we're part of the United Kingdom. Now, what strikes me as the logical course of action when it comes to this is to extricate ourselves from the conditions which have given us this deficit. And that would therefore mean leaving the United Kingdom ensuring that we get the full suite of economic powers to deal with it. And we've all agreed, I think we've all agreed, that we, as a people, are resourceful enough to make a success of our independence. And I think we've also agreed that Scotland, with its abundant natural resources, has what it takes to be an independent country. So what is it? What's happening? What's happening that we have, according to Honourable Gentleman and the Honourable Gentleman there, this deficit? 
How, how fun? We've got the skills, we've got the history of adventures, we've got creativity, we've got universities in the top 100, we've got oil and gas, we've got fisheries, we've got the best potential for renewables in Europe. Why have we got a deficit? Now, I don't know, it's, it's maybe, just, maybe I'm just not getting it, but I seem to believe and sense that it's to do with the constitutional arrangements that we find ourselves in. Now, I don't think I did too badly with all that. I think we got rough agreement yeah, yeah. on a lot. So, like, if we park all of this, and please, I never want to hear anybody suggest ever again that our nation, the people of Scotland, are somehow too wee, poor and stupid to make a success of it. Never again. Right, they're saying our words. Right, what I'll say to the honourable gentleman, right? OK, here's, here's, here's my... Oh, no, 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 I'm, I'm hearing I'm, I'm hearing him clearly. What I'll say to the honourable gentleman, I will make sure... I will make sure that no one in the Scottish National Party utters it again. Can he do the same for his party and he perhaps for the same as that? Let's never hear again a suggestion that will be the case. But anyway, we have agreed, we have agreed that there's a ground, I think, that's, that was useful. That was a useful kick around. So if we've agreed that all these things, what do we do now? How do we have the debate? about going forward, because we have to have this debate. I know people have knocked about opinionable figures, but when we're at 50-50 in the polls, it has to be resolved. It's, it's intolerable that it isn't resolved. And we cannot continue with a future like this. We have to resolve this as an issue. And I know everybody says 2014 we had a referendum. Yes, we had a referendum. But like Scotland in 2022 is an almost different country entirely from 2014. The United Kingdom is unrecognisable from 2014. We have consistently and continually elected governments with a, with a commitment to hold a referendum and to move towards independence. We're all here as representatives of that very mission. So we have to resolve this. So my last plea when it comes to all of these things is demonstrate, let's all demonstrate to the Scottish people that we're not some sort of hostage within the United Kingdom, that we are the equal partner that everybody talks about, that was described so eloquently du during the, in the last independence referendum, during the campaign, campaign that we were to lead Scotland, as my right honourable friend said. These were all these things. So let's, let's test this. Let's have this debate, because all the pillars of the Better Together campaign, that the things that sustain this tent that they put under, the tent that accommodated both Labour, both Tories, which was so catastrophic for the Labour Party, the fact that the Honourable Gentleman is the only member of the Labour Party here, dreadful for them, a terrible experience for them. <laughs> but all those central pillars are gone, and it's collapsed. The case for staying in their union is gone, and it's gone particularly when we observe the crisis and chaos of the last few weeks. Scotland can't put up with this anymore. We, we can't be governed by incompetence who you, drive us to the very abyss of a pension crisis. We can't go on like this. So the last thing, can we all agree we must have a referendum to settle this? Yeah. Yeah. Robin Miller. <laughs>